Next class up is Mini Max, IndyCar Minis they call them here. Zane Quaker on the 44 car is the championship leader. He's on pole. Lucius McDermott is tied for the championship lead, but he is not here this weekend. So Zane Quaker and Ollie Hipkins on that front row from Jack Burgess and James Spencer. Then Eric Smith and Maisie Creed from Ben Gordon and Jackson Lane. Then Gillum, Flynn, Bicharek and Zach Kane. It's going to be an interesting charge forward. Here we go. A good start from Zane Quaker and off on the grass. My goodness, that's a weird one. And straight into the path of the oncoming carts. What a shame for James Spencer. And unfortunately, that triggers a bit of a moment for everybody else. Only seven carts get through without incident. Let's have a look again. So this is Spencer and unfortunately Eric Smith and Ben Gordon had very little they could do to take avoiding action. Spencer's on the grass, he comes straight back onto the course and everybody else is trying to avoid it. Who else went wide? That's the 57 going wide, so that's Jackson Lane and also the treble two, Maisie Creed having to take avoiding action. Here's how Charlie Gillum saw it. Look at this, you've got no chance at all. How did Charlie Gillum avoid that? Exactly, he'll be happy he saw it, but uh, he nearly caught him out and he is up to fourth place already. Well, Zane Quaker is the early leader, and if he wins this race, of course, he will take the lead of the championship by just four points with one round to go. So it's crucial for Zane Quaker that he stays out there in front of Hipkins and Burgess. He is trying to stretch away the lead. Hipkins is trying to get closer to his teammate, but it's not looking very easy at the moment. Gillum in fourth position, but this is the battle for fifth. Good recovery from Maisie Creed. She's already trying to go wheel to wheel there with Sam Flynn in front of uh, Sauri Bicharek. And then, of course, you've got James Spencer and Zach Kane in the top three, Quaker, Hipkins and Burgess. Burgess, of course, is in fourth in the championship at the moment, but he's currently running in P3 ahead of Charlie Gillam, the man who dodged the bullet in the first corner. Here's the duel for fifth position. Sam Flynn at the head of the pack. And then you've got Maisie Creed having a great race comeback here. And that's James Spencer just in behind, having managed to get the move there on Sari Vicharek. I hope I've got that name right, by the way. If you haven't, see you in court and see you on the grid again next year when I get it right. Good performance by James Spencer so far. He's uh, made a lot of places back after being off through Turn 1. Sam Flynn started P10, he's in fifth now. Clearly, he made up all those places Ooh, at the start. That was a big moment, and that was triggered by Sam Flynn getting a little bit sideways. Maisie Creed tried to get the inside gap, realised at the last moment that that gap wasn't going to be big enough yeah. and had to slam on the brakes. That was so nearly a bit of contact. James Spencer reacted in good time, so did Vicharek. So that was so nearly an incident, but they just about got away with that. Quick reactions from the Minimax competitors. Now the move is on. Maisie Creed gets the opportunity on Sam Flynn. That's that great. was well reacted. Great driving. It was great driving up in Stanlow. So she backed out of it, didn't go off, didn't take the driver out in front. And then big switch back when she saw uh, Sam Flynn going really narrow up into the Hooten hairpin, Jake. That, that's pretty early to start defending, but he's doing it again now, and he's just inviting someone to go around the outside, oh, and they have. Oh, beautiful. James Spencer is not going to dilly-dally. He goes right around the outside on the approach to turn one at Vauxhall, and that's beautifully handled. Unfortunately, Sam Flynn just going ultra-defensive. Clearly doesn't feel like he's got the pace in the car, but look, he's compromised himself. The door wide open again, and Vicharek is going to get alongside, but can the Cosmic sail by? Not just yet, so Vicharek's going to have to try again, but wise heads on the shoulders there of both Maisie Creed and James Spencer. They saw the opportunity was going to open up, waited for the moment, and as the door opened up organically, they just sailed through on the inside. Vicharek has only just got to sit there and wait for the door to open again for Sam Flynn. Yeah, so this is the battle for seventh place. And Flynn, I think you called it right, Jake. I don't think he's got any confidence in his car whatsoever. And again, he drives narrow down up into Hooten Hairpin, but that invites the switchback. And on, uh, now, not close enough is the driver behind, so Witcherek not close enough into Hooten Hairpin, but he needs to concentrate on getting close enough up into the hairpin so he can switch him back coming out. So he's spending nearly as much time looking behind him as he is looking in front of him. Indeed. He's just in panic mode now, and here comes Gordon trying to sail up the inside on the Haase chassis, and he's done a great job there to move forward. Excellent work. That puts Gordon up into eighth position through Stanlow. Nicely handled. And actually, looking up the road, I noticed that Maisie Creed has got a lot of pressure from Spencer up into that hairpin. Is that going to be an overtaking move? Well, certainly, it looks as though Gordon's going to make two moves now. Got through on Vicharek, now gets through on Sam Flynn. So that's really well handled from Benjamin Gordon on the Haase chassis. He gets through into position number seven. So that puts him a little bit further up. Now, what about Creed and Spencer up the road? 
They're about four seconds off the back of Charlie Gillam, but I couldn't quite see. Did Spencer get the run there on Maisie Creed or not? Because she's been very good in defence, but no, Spencer did get through on Maisie Creed. However, up front, Zane Quaker, he's away with the fairies in the lead. He's having a great job up front. Yeah, comfortable win this will be for Zane Quaker. This is a battle for second place, though. This is one we want to concentrate on at the moment because we've got Hipkins and Burgess battling for this spot. And the drivers further back are also in an interesting battle, but there's only so many carts when they're so spread out you can cover. And again, that's the difficulty at club level. It spreads out quite dynamically over the course of a race. So you've got to try and essentially be as fluid and as metronomic in terms of your pace, hitting your apexes, looking after your engine, looking after your tyres. This race is not won on the first lap, but it's definitely occasionally lost just by overdriving that cart in the first couple of laps. You've got to get yourself into a good rhythm. And fair play to Jack Burgess. It looked at one stage as though he was out of contention for second, but he has read the writing on the wall very well for Ollie Hipkins. He knows he's vulnerable, and he might just snatch something here on the last lap. He's only half a second back. Zane Quaker is going to have no problem at all working his way past Zach Kane on the last lap. You get the sense this is going to be a frustrating, so near but so far type of race for Jack Burgess. He's caught Ollie Hipkins right in. He's got a hope for a mistake here, really, from Hipkins, and that hasn't come yet. And it's unlikely to at this late stage. He could really do with one or maybe two more laps, even, to try and get back on terms with Hipkins. He's going to run out of time, though. Zane Quaker is going to take the chequered flag and the title with it. Great job. Hipkins in second from Burgess in third. Oh, so nearly for Jack Burgess. One more lap and he could have changed his fortunes there. We look back and still a great battle going on. This is Flynn and Vicerek. Vicerek still feels he can get this. Gillam comes home in fourth position. Good recovery drives from James Spencer and Maisie Creed after their moment at the start. Good run from Benjamin Gordon. Look, he just drops Flynn and Vicerek in the closing stages. Sam Flynn is going to be able to hang on to this in front of Kasari Vicerek and Jackson Lane to finish it off in fine style here at Hooten Park. A critical win for Zane Quaker in terms of the championship. He is now just four points ahead of Lucius McDermott. Ollie Hipkins in second from Jack Burgess. Charlie Gillam in fourth from James Spencer. Maisie Creed, just like Spencer, they fought back brilliantly. Ben Gordon in front of Sam Flynn, Kasari Vicerek and Jackson Lane. But what that means for the championship now is that if Lucius McDermott returns next time out and wins, Zane Quaker must finish second or third to clinch the title. Jack Burgess is there with only two points on Eric Smith and three on Ollie Hipkins. It may be a very close showdown next time out, but I tell you what, the spirit of competition is definitely alive and kicking here in IndyCar. Isn't that lovely?